Take your Bibles and, first of all, turn to Psalm 24 and Romans 8, 17. And this morning I felt like the Lord speak to me about a couple of things. And uh, John chapter 9, verses 3 and 5. This verse came to mind. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of, of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I just want to say one thing. Night is coming when no man can work. How many know that's true? Um, the, yesterday, Janice and I, um, when we were coming here, I had her, we, we were trying to pick up something to, to listen to on my phone in the car, and uh, we got this uh, thing from Clay Clark, and he played this thing about how, um, you know, it was uh, from Fox News and from a couple of other places. So you know, here's a couple of things you may not know. How many know who Joe Rogan is? All right. Did you know Joe Rogan was reading out of the book of Revelation on his podcast? When Joe Rogan is reading out of the book of Revelation, which every other word that comes out of his mouth is the F word, you know that something's up. True? True. The CBD or the CBDC, the central bank digital currency, is is online. Uh, they've already run a test on it. Um, uh, they showed a, a clip off of Fox News, and uh, they have a they have a chip, and they probably had this for a long time. But there's a chip the size of a grain of uh, rice. They can inject under your skin. And uh, you no longer will need your uh, billfold or credit card or anything like that. Uh, I'm sure that they'll gladly put it in your right hand and they'll gladly put it in your forehead. So that when you go to the store, you don't have to pull out your uh, credit card. You can just show your hand. And the central bank digital currency will already take it out of your account. And there was, there was, they showed a, a, a video clip and some gal and guy on the newscast, they were all giddy because they keep losing their billfold. <laughs> the day is coming. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of harvest. There is a day coming when no man can no longer work. True? Um, also, the other thing is, is that uh, I think it's MIT came up with a, a micro dot now that uh, they can implant under your skin. And I'm sure, according to um, Naval, uh, what's his name, old Jubal, uh, 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 what's his name, Harari, that guy? How do you pronounce this in, in uh, Hebrew? It's, it's, in English, it's Jubal, so it's uh, Yuval, Yuval Noah Harari. Um, you, have a, you have a micro dot that uh, you can put under your skin and they can track you and it will contain all of your health records. <laughs> what, are you saying your dot's gonna be this big? <laughs> Jesus said, this is not even my message today, but I just, John 4, 34, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me to finish his work. Don't you have a saying, it's still four months until harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields, they are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps and draws a wage uh, and harvest for a, a crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the same, one sows and another reaps, is true. 
I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. I just, um, I feel an urgency, and I'm, I'm praying about this. I'm saying, God, how can we be more effective in evangelism? How can we be more effective in reaching the lost? Because the night is coming. The night is coming when no man can work. Do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, you know, when I was growing up, you know, we had uh, The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey. How many have read that book? Okay. That was a, you know, that was a book that led uh, thousands and thousands of people to the Lord. But, you know, a lot of that stuff that it didn't work out the way that Hal Lindsey thought it was going to work out. But I tell you what, if we ever lived in a day and an age for, for the end time scenario to happen is, is right now. Some people, um, some people are, uh, you know, prophetic, the prophets and stuff like that. Some people are prophesying that God will give us a great revival. I don't know what's going to happen. I just know that when if, when these when I, we as Christians leave this earth, all of hell is going to break loose. Yeah. Yeah, the black clouds are coming with the storm. You know? Yes. God's going to help. Us. Yes, God is going to help us. So I want you to be encouraged. I'm, so don't feel discouraged. All right. <laughs> so uh, do you still have the victory? Amen. Okay. I'm not scolding you. I'm just, just throwing a bucket of cold water in your face. <laughs> right? Are you awake? So, let's start here with the, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the water. Psalm 24, 1 and 2. Now, if we are children, then our heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Romans 8, 17. And uh, I forgot my funnies. I'll, I'll show them to you next week, all right? But let's pray. Father God, we just ask that you would bless the reading and the preaching of your word today. Let there be an open heaven between you and these people. May divine revelation flow from your throne room straight to their heart. And Lord, may we all be able to say it has been well, it has been good to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, Father, I just pray, God, that this uh, word today, God, that you would just release it. Father, because you want to uh, bestow blessings upon your children and Lord, you have made us stewards of this earth. And Lord, we just ask that you would just help us to receive your word today. Help me to preach, oh God. Hide me behind the cross. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, Pastor, I know you didn't beat him, see, but you didn't say anything about the tithe. Oh. <laughs> I have my tithe. You have your tithe. Okay. Well, come on up. Anybody who didn't have their tithe. So... Anybody else? All right. Thank you, Tom. Come on. Praise God. Um, let's talk about the power of stewardship. A few years ago, um, I was... Uh, I, Janice and I had sent out a bunch of resumes. We were looking for a church and asked, asked praying and asking the Lord to lead us to the place that he wanted us to pastor. And uh, so I was going through that, uh, you know, selection process. And as I was going through the selection process, um, there were points where um, people were asking for CDs of my sermons. And uh, I had just left the church at Kelso. And uh, they gave me a stack of CDs, uh, recordings of my sermon, but they recorded the whole service. And I didn't want to send out, you know, um, a CDs of a, of a sermon that had a song service on it. 
You know, because, you know, I, I thought, well, they, uh, this guy just has a song service and, uh, you know, they'll, you know, so, so what I did was I needed to edit it. And so I was talking to um, the church that we were attending was a guy that was, uh, was a worship leader. And he was telling me about this process. He said, well, I tell you what, you, you can take the file and you can, you can have this download, this program, and then you can crack the CD and you can turn it into an MP3 and then put it in a uh, Dropbox and mail it to me and then um, I can edit it and then you can, I can send it back to you. And, uh, and he, he had this whole complicated process. And I said, well, and then he goes, well, what, what kind of computer do you have? And I said, well, I just have a Mac iBook, uh, a MacBook Pro. He goes, what? You got a MacBook Pro? You already have GarageBand, and you already have iTunes. You have everything that you need. And I go, what? And I, I didn't know you could do that in GarageBand. And he, he was explaining, well, in GarageBand, it's a, it's a full functioning uh, digital audio workstation and you can edit audio. And the great thing about it, it's free when you buy your Mac. Well, I thought, wow. All of a sudden I had resources that I didn't even know that I had. I was, uh, I was ecstatic, I was excited. Um, I had everything. I needed to do exactly what I what I really really wanted to do, but I didn't even know it. This brings me to this: I have resources that most people don't even know about. Psalm twenty four tells me the earth is the Lord, and Romans eight seventeen tells me now if we are children, then heirs heirs of God and co heirs with Christ. So that brings me to this: therefore, I am a steward of all God owns. What is a steward? It's somebody who manages somebody else's property, finances, or household. The benefit of being a steward is that you use the master stuff as it is. Uh, uh, was um, excuse me, use the master stuff as if it was your own, provided that you take care of it properly. Now, up here on the screen, there is a there is a guy named Frederick, or no, commonly known as Fritz Chrysler. And he was born February 2nd, and 1875, and died January 29th, 1962, when I was just barely, it wasn't even two years old. He was an Austrian-born American violinist and composer, one of the most noted violin uh, masters of his day, regarded for one of the greatest violinists of all times. He was known for his sweet tone and expressive phrasing. Um, he said this, he goes, Fritz Chrysler, the great Austrian violinist, I was born with music in my system. I knew musical scores instinctively before I knew my ABCs. It was a gift of providence. I did not acquire it, so I do not even deserve thanks uh, for my music. Music is too sacred to be sold. The outrageous priced uh, musical celebrities charge uh, are truly a crime against society. I never took or look upon the money I earn as my own. It is public money. It is only a fund entrusted me for proper disimbursement. I am constantly endeavoring to reduce my needs to a minimum. I feel morally guilty in ordering a costly meal for it deprives someone else of a slice of bread. Some child, perhaps a bottle of milk. My beloved wife feels the same way about these things that I do. In all the, these years of my so-called success, we have not built a house for ourselves. Between us and it stands all the homelessness of the world. Um, this is stewardship at its best. Acknowledging all good gifts come from God, humbly using them to bring happiness to others. This is what life is all about, that we may not have to go as far as uh, Fritz uh, Chrysler, because I believe that God wants you to own a house. Let me say that again. I believe that God wants you to own your own house. 
Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. I believe that God wants you to own your own house. In all, um, uh, but uh, but I do think that uh, it is wise to use God's resources to spend. I don't think it's wise to use God's resources to spend more money on dog food than we do to give to missions. Jesus told us a story about investment. And read along with me. This is Matthew 25, 14 through 30. And it's uh, out of the message. It is like a man going off on an extended trip. He called together his servants and delegated responsibilities. To the one he gave $5,000, to another $2,000, and to a third $1,000, depending on their abilities. Then he left right off uh, the first servant and went to work and doubled his master's investment. The second did the same. But the man with the single thousand uh, dug a hole and carefully buried his master's money. Verse 19, after a long absence, the master of those three servants came back and settled with them. The one with $5,000 showed up how he had doubled his investment. His master had commended him, good work. You did your job well. From now on, be my partner. And then the servant with the 2,000 showed up how he also had doubled his master's investment. His master commended him, good work. You did your job well. From now on, be my partner. The servant given 1,000 said, Master, I know you have high standards and are afraid that I might disappoint you. So I found a good hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound with a little dirt on it and to the last cent. The master was furious. That's a terrible way to live. It's criminal to live cautiously like that. If you knew that I, I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? The least you could have done would have been to invest the sum with the bankers where at least I would have gotten a little interest. Take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most and get rid of this play it safe who would not go out on a limb and throw him into utter darkness. Number one, the first point I want to say is get your attitude right about God. In this story, Jesus is the master. He, has a, he, he gave each one a specific sum of money, but he gave it according to their ability. And he's talking about money. He's, he's not only, this could be applied to talents, but he's also, he's talking more about money. What did you do with my money? The first servant, I doubled it. I came up with 10,000. Note the response. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. The second servant, I doubled your money too. And now you have 4,000. I've been, you've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in my master's happiness. The third servant, he said, well, I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid I might fail, so I didn't do anything. And the master was angry with him. He called him a wicked, lazy servant. At least you could have deposited it in the bank. Whereas the first and second servants were promoted, the consequence for the third servant were what a little you have goes to a rival. The second thing, if you don't use it, you lose it. And then it all goes dark, hopeless. Here's a couple of points under getting your right attitude. God wants to bless us with abundance. But um, abundance comes with responsibility. And that is with our own abilities. So we have nothing to be afraid of. Um, the second thing is the key to abundance is how we act toward the giver. Uh, the, that third servant said, I was afraid. I was afraid. I, I, it's it's kind of like a, it's kind of like the dog that bites the master's hand that feeds him. True. You have nothing to be afraid of when it comes to God. You have nothing to be afraid of. Get your attitude right before God. God will bless you because he has no lack for you or your family. Now, now I'm not preaching this message today because 
I, uh, because the offerings are short, all right? Do you hear me? I'm preaching this, this message today because it's a, a series that I wrote a long time ago and never really had a chance to preach about the elements in a service. But more than anything, I want you to understand that God has an abundance for you. Do you believe that? God has an abundance for you. The second thing, there's no shortages with God. Um, we hear about shortages all the time. Um, they say that uh, beef is going to go up in October uh, at least by 20% because there are shortages of beef. Um, remember when the pandemic started? The first thing everybody did, for some reason, there was this crazy thing that COVID would give you terrible, and you needed toilet paper. And so Janice and I, were, we, we were preaching here. We were just filling in on that Sunday. We went back, and Janice says, well, I hear everybody's... We, we need to buy some toilet paper. Well, I said, well, man, you got a whole bunch at home. Why do you need more? Well, I don't know. I might run out, you know. So we went there, and I tell you, there was no toilet paper to be had. <laughs> Nothing. Except a, a few corn cobs. That was it. <laughs> there was nothing left. I want you to know God is the source of all real estate. You don't need transport. If you need transportation, God owns the beast on all the fields, and he also owns the camels and the Cadillacs. How many could say amen? amen? The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. Consider this great question. Why do we sit here in poverty? The simple reason that we haven't made God our source is that God's desire is to share all he has with you so you can use it to bless others with. God is all about abundance. John 10, 10, the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Romans 8, 17, and therefore since we are children and we are heirs, the, in fact, together with Christ, we are heirs in God's glory. But if you are to share his glory, we must also share in his sufferings. Do you, do you know God wants you to share in his glory? But sometimes that glory comes with suffering. How many know that's true? Sometimes we sit and we cry with people, and sometimes we sit and we laugh with people, and sometimes we go through great loss. But I just know this, Jesus will be glorified if we just trust him. And I didn't mean to pick out a little scab there. It's like, uh, how, many, how many know this? What Irma Bombeck said was true. It probably should have been in the Bible. I know she said that the grass is always greener over the septic tank. <laughs> but she also said that life is hard and then you die. If we... If we suffer with Jesus, we will also be raised again with him. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. What Jesus was saying there is if you seek my kingdom, if you put me first, all these other things will be given to you. Here's an important lesson. Peter walking on the water. Keep your eyes on Jesus. As long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, the source, 
he, Peter was spared and will be spared. But as soon as Peter took his eyes off the source, Peter sunk into the stormy seas. America, we, might, we are mighty, we are self-sufficient, but just like Peter, if we, keep, if, we don't take, if we take our eyes off of Jesus, we're going to sink. How many know that's true? And part of our problem today is in America is we're taking our eyes off of Jesus. The next thing is Gehazi was Elisha's servant. This third thing is God is more than the bills. Remember the story about how um, they were all surrounded and Gehazi, he goes, hey, Elisha, we're, we are cooked. We are doomed. We don't know what to do. And, and, and Elisha prayed. He said, don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, O Lord, open the eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. Some of you get worried and stressed out about money, but you know what? I heard a testimony about a gal that went to heaven, and uh, she, uh, she needed money. I think it was Kim Robinson. And uh, the Lord took her to the treasury room. And she went to this treasury room. And in this treasury room, there were tables, vast tables of money. And on each table was a person's name and a big pile of money. And right at that time, she had a debt to the IRS, her and her husband. And uh, she said, well, I don't know. You know, she was... She goes, Lord, is that that's she that my money? And he goes, Yeah, that's your money. Well, he said, uh, he goes, Well, how much do you need? She goes, Well, we we got this debt. It's like twenty thousand dollars. We're gonna lose our business if we don't pay it by this Friday. And in her, I don't know if it's a dream or a vision, but Jesus reached down and grabbed a stack of money. Counted out twenty thousand, and he he turned around to an angel, and he handed it to an angel. And he said, "Go," and the angel took off just like that at the speed of light. And when the dream, the revision, when it was over, she woke up or came back, and all of a sudden there was. A debt, some uh, by some odd circumstances, somebody owed them twenty thousand dollars that they didn't even know, and God paid it, and they paid off the IRS. God, you you cannot see. Sometimes you need the God to open up your eyes. There's more. There's God is more than the bills. I know this at times when when Janice and I, you know, we pay our tithe and stuff. And there's times where we've come and uh, we had we had no money, especially the one time when I had no job. We had a daughter in college and a thousand dollars a month we were paying on our college bill and uh, uh our house down in California, we were making a payment at our house in Kelso and the house in California, the gal, the people that were renting the house were behind on the rent for six months. And we were paying both. And we, we t I took my prayer cards, we took the bills, we laid them out, and we, we prayed our prayer cards about God's finances and things. And I just know this, God is more than the bills. And just like that, God turned that whole thing around and that tenant paid their back payments. God is more than the bills. How many can say praise God? Praise God. Praise God. I just have to say, this um, is such a, an amazing story. Last week, my coworker and friend came to me and she said, I have this medical debt that I'm getting sent to collections for, but I missed a, a payment and now they're, um, they sent um, a 
like they summoned her or they served her with papers or something. Mm -hmm. And so she was going to go to my boss for um, for a loan for like two thousand dollars or whatever. Well, that debt collection company or whatever called her and said your debt's been paid. Or someone came in and paid it for you, <laughs> and it was two thousand dollars. Praise God. Yeah. Praise and, God. And, and so I was talking to my boss about it, and I said, Earl. Kristen and I prayed and prayed for God's provision and prayed for the debt to be, um, like, you know, removed from her, you know? And so, Amen. and I was like, what an answer to prayer. Amen. Amen. Now we can say, praise, praise God. God. Amen. Amen. God is no respecter of persons. What he's done for others, he can do for who? Amen. You. Me. God is more than the bills. God is more than the bills. Elisha was Elijah's protege when the creek dried up and God led Elijah to the widow of Zarephath. We learned that we must walk in faith to move into the resources of God. Remember the story. Elijah comes to town. He's been fed by crows. The creek dried up. Go to Zarephath. He went to Zarephath. He meets a widow. Of collecting sticks and he asked the widow said give me something to eat and the widow said all I got is a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil and I'm gonna make a pancake and I'm gonna you know I'm just collecting some uh, sticks for the stove and all of a sudden the word of the Lord came to Elijah and it said this for this is what the Lord says the God of Israel says the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. Amen. Amen. If, you're, if you're put in a position, if you're put in a position where they, where they say, oh, you know what? You have to use this digital currency and we want you to put a little chip in your hand so that you can spend it. And I tell you, you say, no, I'm not going to do that because that sounds a lot like the mark of the beast. In fact, that is the mark of the beast. Amen. I've got a registration because they know who you are. That's right. <laughs> do you think God can still provide for you yeah. even though the whole world turns oh. against you? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Trees come to brook and eat with the raisins for you. That's right. Even if you have to go out in the woods with Leslie and eat what the ravens bring you. Pigeon. Quail. Quail. Here's point number three. God is the source of wisdom. Read a chapter out of the book of Proverbs every day if you need wisdom. Proverbs 4, 5 says, Get wisdom, get understanding, do not forget my words or swerve from them. God's wisdom will prosper, but for your wisdom you will fail. Uh, Proverbs 8, 35 says, For whoever finds me uh, finds life, and whoever finds favor uh, from the Lord. Um, God wants us to effectively manage our life. The second thing is... Uh, definite action will bring financial blessing. Uh, financial blessing doesn't happen magically. Yet you have to know the right things and do the right things. John 8, 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It is not the truth that you know sets you free, but it's the truth that you, get, that you do that gives you financial freedom. Here is, it, does everybody have my notes here? Do you have notes? Here, I want you to fill in these 10 points here. These are the most important part of the message right here. Um, live by 10 practical points. Here's point number one. Pay your tithe and your offerings. Um... I get, sometimes I, well, I tell people, I say, well, uh, you know, they say, why should I pay my tithe? And I said, well, I tell you what, God said that uh, he will bless you if you do. If you pay your tithe and God doesn't bless you, I'll give you your money back. How's that sound? <laughs> um, I, you know, I get mad when people say, well, they, they fight about the tithe because 
what they're doing is they're withholding God's resources from their lives. Here's the point number two. Is uh, don't borrow money you can't afford to pay back. Proverbs 22, 7 says, The rich over the poor, the rich rule over the poor, and the borrow a servant to the lender. If you want to ruin your life for marriage, get into debt. Uh, if you can't afford it, don't buy it. You know what sinks a family? Is it, is it the. Uh, they say the number one cause of divorce is communication or it's money. Um, how you spend your money depends on how well you communicate. If you don't communicate very well, you don't, um, you don't uh, spend money very well. But then also, if you, uh, if you don't spend your money very, very well in your marriage, um, you're going to end up spending most of your marriage fighting about what money you don't have because you spend it on other things. True? Uh, here's the other thing is, what sinks a family? Well, if it's women buying a lot of small things and men buying big ticket items. Number three, use credit cards sparingly. Um, use credit cards sparingly. What do I mean by sparingly? <coughs> Excuse me. Don't buy anything with a credit card you can't pay off in 30 days. Did you hear me? <laughs> Don't buy anything with a credit card you can't pay off in 30 days. If you if you can't pay it off in 30 days, don't put it on a credit card. And not just anything. Yeah. Not anything. Number 4. Number 4. Avoid get rich quick schemes. It is not God's will for you to play uh, to win the lottery, so stop playing it. It's not, it's not God's will uh, for you to get rich quickly. Yeah, and lottery is just um, tax on the poor. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Number five, be careful what you purchase. Ask yourself four questions before each purchase. When you see something you're going to buy, Ask yourself this first question. Do I need this? Then ask yourself a second question. Do I need this? <laughs> Before you pick it up, ask yourself. Do I need this? My looks are good. <laughs> and, if and if your answer is still yes, ask again. Will this purchase please God? So, before you buy something, ask yourself, do I need this? Number six, don't write checks unless you have money in the bank. Can I hear an amen? Uh, this doesn't happen as much as it used to, but uh, we used to have frantic calls on Monday. Pastor, don't cash that check. <laughs> Number seven, don't buy, don't borrow to buy depreciable items, depreciable items. Don't borrow money to buy stereos, appliances, or really vacations. Or borrow money to buy things that, uh, uh, only borrow money that, uh, that for things to buy something that will appreciate in the value, like a house. Um, I used to have a guy in uh, our church, his name was Ed Sasson, Ed Alice Sasson, and he did the most remarkable thing. He, he would take cash down and he would pay for a brand new car in cash and he'd get an excellent deal. And then he would go home and he would park the car and he would drive that new car and sell his old car, get a good price for it. And then every time he'd get paid, he would take money that would be for a car payment and put it into the bank. And then when it came time to buy a new car, he had cash in hand to pay for it. You must have listened to Dave Ramsey. Yes. And... Uh, uh, 
Go buy a beater car instead of a brand new car if you don't have the money. Right? Um, I had a couple come in for marriage counseling once, and the, the problem was, well, one problem was they weren't married, and somebody told them the pastors were free. Um, the second problem was this, was, uh, was that they, they said, uh, I said, well, what's, what's the problem? They said, well, we're thousands of dollars in debt. And I said, well, okay, how much do you make? And he, he gave me how much he made, and I said, okay, what's your bill? So I listed his bills. And he had enough money that he came in each month that he could, um, he could, you know, easily pay off all of his bills. I said, well, what do you do with your, ex your, your expendable cash? He, he goes, well, I tell you what, we, we go out to eat four times a week, maybe five times a week. Um, sometimes we go to claim jumpers. And sometimes we go to the Olive Garden. Uh, and I go, well, you go, you go like four nights a week? Oh, yeah. Well, I said, you put, that, you put that on a credit card? Yeah. I said, that's why you don't have any money. Because you only have $300 extra at the end of each month. And every time you go out to eat, you're dropping a $100 bill. And this was 20-some years ago. Now, I don't know how much it costs. It probably costs an arm and a leg and a kidney to get something to eat. Literally, you flushed your money down the toilet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they are. They put it. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I'll get rid of this cold. Yeah. Number eight. Develop a plan of investing ten percent of your net income. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Matthew 25, 21. You have been faithful in handling these small things, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Uh, how can a man leave something for his children? Uh, he, he, he learn to give 10% to the church and then be disciplined to invest 10%. Make God your source by being consistent. Don't cheat on God. If, it's, if it is a Sunday, be in church. Don't skip. Jesus said, if you're faithful in the small things, the biggest thing I see is people's lives they have trouble with is today is consistency. Many times they're inconsistent. Number nine, checking account needs month-to-month -month resuscitation. Balance your checkbook. A lot of you are saying, well, Pastor, I just get a, a statement from the bank. Um... And I just go by whatever the bank says. That's what my kids do. Well, at least just do this. Look at that bank statement all the time. Because you don't know if somebody else is taking money out of the bank. Right? So, uh, you need to look at your checking account. And look at your debit expenditures. And look at your automatic payments. Make sure that they're not double dipping you or you've got automatic payments that are coming out for something you're not using anymore. Number 10. Number 10. Don't be a loose liver. Tie up your liver. Proverbs 23, 20 through 21 says... Do not join in those who drink too much wine or gorge themselves on meat. For drunkards and gluttons become poor and drowsiness clothes them in rags. Don't be a loose liver. Tie up your liver. I want to close with this. Make God your source. Philippians 4.19 And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Let me ask you a question. Who is your source? Is it your boss? No. Your boss isn't your source. Is it the government? No. God is your source. God's desire is to crown your effort with success. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. If God wants to crown my efforts with success, I say, go get them, God. Favor and good success with God and man. How many like, how many want favor with man and God? And success. If you want a better life, then stake your life on this principle. My life gets better and better because of the principles I stake my life on today. Start today living by God's principles and you will su see success. Amen? Now, I just want to close each service by saying this one thing. Is, is there anyone here today who could say, hey, you know, pastor, please pray for me. My, my relationship with the Lord is not where it should be. Praise God. Praise God. The prayer I wrote for this message was this. Is now God, open their eyes that they may see what drains us of spiritual power. Financial failure. You are the God that can give us ideas and tell us where to find jobs and how to wisely spend our money. I had a young couple in my church. Um, they were in my young marriage class and, uh, years ago, and uh, I found out something. I, I challenged them. I said, hey, if you want wisdom, start reading out the book of Proverbs, one chapter a day. You know, uh, today is the 3rd of September. Read Proverbs chapter 3. They started doing that, and uh, they got an idea. Uh, his wife had young kids and she was at home and they were trying to make enough money so that the wife wouldn't have to go to work. And uh, the husband was a mechanic. And so what she started to do was she started to go through the help wanted ads, or not the help wanted ads, but the, through the paper, this is before Craigslist. And she'd find cars that people were selling and she would call them and said, hey, um, uh, we're interested in that car. And so the husband would, when he got off work, she'd call him up and say, here's, here's an address. These people are selling a car. And uh, so they would go there and many times they'd say, hey, I don't know what's wrong with this car. It's shot. And him being a mechanic, he'd pop open the hood and he'd find that many times it was just an oil leak or something minor. And he would fix it. And oftentimes they sold it to him for like cheap and he'd fix it and turn around and sell it for a profit well do you think God is capable of giving you ideas just like that amen amen God God can help you so let's make God the source so Father, I just ask you to just open up our eyes, oh God, that we might see what you have available for us, oh God. Make us wise. Lord, I pray that you would just make us consistent in serving you and Lord in serving the church. God, make us consistent, I pray. And Father, I pray that you would give us wisdom and understanding. And Lord, I pray that help us, every one of us, to make you the source. We thank you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Amen.